Hello everyone. The discussion boards were really good last night again. The main issue is with the time value of money calculations for bond pricing. So I'm going to go over a couple homework problems to make sure you understand what you're doing. The first one says TR issues 6% 10 year bonds with a total base value of $1,500,000. The market rate of interest for bonds of similar risk and maturity is 5.9%. Interest is paid semi-annually. First question is, what's the issue price of the bond? And it tells you to round the issue price to the nearest dollar. All bonds have two cash flows. Principal, also called face value. In this case, it's a million five hundred thousand dollars. That's a single sum for a lump sum. This is the amount that we're going to give our bond investors back after the bond matures in ten years. In the meantime, we're going to give them cash interest payments for the use of their funds. The cash interest payments based on the stated rate of six percent. Because it's semi-annual, we divide by two, we get 3% stated rate every six months. So our cash interest payment is 1500000 times 3% or $45,000 every six months. In our financial calculator, you would put 20 for your N. Because the semi-annual, you take 10 years, times two payments per year, 20 cash flows. The IY is always based on the market rate of interest. The market rate of interest is 5.9%. 5.9% divided by 2 is 2.95. You always use the market rate for the IY in your calculator. The payment's going to be $45,000 every six months. The stated rate times the face value. And then the future value will be the face value. It's what we owe our investors at the end of the maturity of the bond. We compute the present value and we get a face value of 1511210 If we're using tables, the tables will be a 2.95% for our rate and 20 for our N. Well, because our table doesn't have a 2.95, we're going to use the calculator in the upper left-hand column. We put 2.95 in for the rate, 20 for the N, and we get a present value of a dollar of 0.55908. We multiply the 0 .55908 times the million five, which is the single sum or lump sum, and we get a present value for that amount of 838,620. Now it's time to do the annuity payment of 45,000. Because it's an annuity, we use the present value interest factor for an annuity. Again, we put 2.95 in for 20 periods, and we get 14.94648. We multiply that by the 45,000, and we get the value of the annuity payment. We add the value of the lump sum plus the value of the annuity payments, and we get 1,511,212. This is the price for the value of the bond. There's a difference of one of two dollars only because tables truncate values where calculators don't. That's how you calculate a face value. Second part of the problem says when the company records the first interest payment, how much will the company record for interest expense? Your interest expense is always the bond carrying value, which is also referred to as the bond liability, times the market rate of interest. So for a calculator, we would take 1,511,210 
because that's the carrying value at the time. We multiply it by the market interest rate, which is 0.0295%. We get 44,580.70. The problem is that we round everything to the nearest dollar, so it's 44,581. For the table, we do exactly the same thing. You're going to get 5,511,212 times 0.0295%. We're going to get 44,580,74. It rounds up to 44,581. That's the interest expense. Now we want to calculate the new bond liability or carrying value after the first payment. Round to the nearest dollar. The carrying value is always going to be the carrying value from the beginning of the period adjusted for the amortization of the bond premium. The amortization of the bond premium is the difference between the cash interest payment and the interest expense amount. For a calculator, we're going to use the 1,511,210. The cash payment was 45,000. The interest expense was 44,581. The difference between the 45,000 and the 44,581 is the amount that we're going to amortize of that premium, $419. We're going to take this 419 and we're going to subtract it from the 1,511,210. 1,511,210 minus $419 gives us 1,510,791. That's the new carrying value or the carrying value of the bond after the first payment. We do exactly the same thing for the table. We take the 1,511,212. The difference between the cash payment and the interest expense is the amount of the premium we're going to amortize, $419. Subtract that from the original carrying value, and we get a new carrying value of 1,510,792. This new carrying value is also called the bond liability. When the company records the second interest payment, how much interest expense will we have? Round to the nearest dollar. We take the carrying value from the prior period. So for the calculator, we take 1,510,791. For the table, 1,510,792. Multiply it by the market rate, just like we did for the first period. Get your interest expense by multiplying the prior carrying value times the market rate. Round the interest expense to the nearest dollar. When we have an interest expense in the second period, 44568 The fifth part of this. What's the bond liability after the second interest period? The bond liability after the second interest period is going to be the 1,510,791 carrying value from the prior period or the 1,510,792 carrying value in the prior period using the tables. And we're going to do our amortization by taking the 45,000 of cash payment, subtracting the interest expense of 44,568. The amortization is going to be $432. We're going to subtract the 432 from the beginning carrying value to get a new carrying value for a bond liability of 1,510,359 or 1,510,361. What's the bond liability at the end of 10 years? 
the bond liability at the end of 10 years will be the face value of the bond, $1,500,000. Here's a point you want to remember. Whenever the stated rate is greater than the market rate, if the stated rate is greater than the market rate, it's more. And more means that people will pay us more than the face value of the bond. In this case, they paid us one million five eleven to ten, and the face value is a million five. At maturity, we're going to give these people a million five back, not a million five eleven to ten. And what we do over the life of the bond, we amortize this eleven thousand two ten difference. As we amortize it, this bond, which cost the investors one million five eleven two ten, will ultimately end up maturing at one million five hundred thousand. When it matures, we will redeem the bond by paying it off. We'll pay the investors one million five hundred thousand, debiting bonds payable and crediting cash. That's it. That's what you need to know when it comes to bond premiums.